I will share an incident sent to us by a remittance warrior named Muhammad Mahan, who hails from Meghna Bazar village in the Madhab Upjala of Narsingi district. This incident took place in the eastern part of Meghna Bazar, where Mahan himself witnessed part of the event. Mahan, a remittance warrior, is currently residing in Tehran, Iran. The incident occurred in 2008 when he was quite young and attending school. His grandmother's house was nearby in the eastern part of the village. He would spend two to three days at his grandmother's place and then return home, occasionally commuting to school, as everything was very close. One evening, suddenly there were screams from the people, shouting the monster is coming. The monster is coming. This was quite strange, what did they mean by the monster? It seemed that people had begun to gather and sight something mysterious. Man, along with a few others, exited their homes upon hearing the commotion and headed that way. At that time, it was said that Rubel, Rutten, and Babul, three brothers, were involved in the incident at their house, which had caused the uproar. Several people decided to rush to Rubel's house to see what was happening, and Mahan was among that group. They quickly arrived at the house. Rubel's house was bordered by a tin fence, and when Mahan reached there, he heard loud banging noises coming from the fence, suggesting that someone was being hurled into it. Subsequently, there were sounds of a scuffle coming from inside the house, after some time, it quieted down a bit, but there were many people gathered here, and no one dared to enter the house. Then, after a while, the door opened, and Rubel, Rutten, and Babul, three brothers, stepped out. Their appearances were completely devastated, with various injuries visible on their bodies. At that moment, Rubel, who revealed what had happened, explained that right after evening fell, a black smoke-like entity suddenly entered the room. This entity took on a human form but lacked a distinct face, it was simply like black smoke. This entity then rushed towards his sister, collided with her, and merged into her body, disappearing completely like smoke dissipating after a while. Moments later, his sister began to exhibit abnormal behavior. She screamed and ran out of the house, thrusting her hands into the stove in the yard, tearing at her own hair, biting her hands, her condition was dire. She attempted to harm herself with a sharp weapon. When they tried to calm her down and pulled her back inside, shortly afterward, that same entity emerged from her body again, taking on the same smoky form. The entity then attacked the three brothers. While they struggled with it, Mahan and several others were outside watching, the entity repeatedly assaulted the three brothers in various ways, throwing them against the tin wall. At one point, the entity slipped out through a small hole in the tin fence, much like how we see smoke escape through a tiny opening. When this happened, one of the brothers showed the others some hair that had come from their struggles, indicating where they had grasped the entity, and some of it had ended up in their hands, many present, including Mahan Bai, have seen these hairs, or fur. We often hear that the bodies of jinn or types of evil spirits are hairy, but we have not seen what the hair looks like. However, many present, including Mahan Bai, have witnessed it, they were able to describe this thing after the three brothers observed it during a particular period. They didn't want to take it willingly, they might have pulled it from here and then it disappeared. Anyway, everything becomes completely calm like that night. However, during the day, the three brothers' sister remains absolutely normal. But after evening, the problems begin. After evening, that form reappears in a washing-like shape, and then, in the same way, the name of the sister of the three brothers cannot be mentioned, Mahan Bai doesn't recall it. After that, this affliction strikes hard, meaning it directly affects her sister, and then her issues begin. It continues like this all night, and at the far call to prayer, that affliction leaves. This goes on for a few days, and it is truly unbearable. So, how will a solution be found? We need to look for a solution. Another frightening aspect is that when that entity affected Rubel Mama's sister, she would speak in a strange manner, saying things like if someone whispers or speaks loudly. We don't whisper, but if someone speaks loudly, it sounds bizarre. She would say things like, I will kill all of you, no one will survive. After the incident on the first night, the local imam was called, as soon as he entered the room, he became severely frightened. Without saying a word, he quickly started to walk out. When people asked what was wrong, he said, 
oh my, it's impossible for me to handle this. Forget about finding a solution, it is beyond my capability to perform exorcism for this matter. So, he left quickly, and the next day another religious leader was consulted. This leader stated that this was a terrifying spirit known as Ifit. The spirit associated with Ifit never goes away, it completely overwhelms its victim. The incident initially began when that religious leader mentioned a hijal tree near their home. He said that if they disposed of waste there, it would provoke the spirit. That evening, your sister used a fan to toss hot rice at the base of the hijal tree, and that action inadvertently affected the Ifit spirit, causing it to retaliate, which led to your sister being attacked, this situation escalated, the religious leader also indicated that it was not possible to perform an exorcism for this matter. Thus, for several days, they would confine her with shackles each evening. However, another horrifying occurrence took place. Even with the shackles holding her, the links appeared to become loose and break apart. The chains formed a shape like an egg, and each link broke off one by one, falling like crispy fried snacks, which allowed her to escape. Then, the terrifying behavior began again. Dear listeners, consider this, how could the shackles break apart on their own? Such events began to manifest, and they tried various remedies, but nothing worked. They brought in another religious leader to perform an exorcism during the day, but once evening arrived, the same issues resurfaced. Eventually, they decided to bring in a renowned spiritual healer who conducted rituals for just two days. After that, the troubling behavior returned. As the family grew increasingly distressed about how to resolve this problem, a thought occurred to one of them, they remembered a famous local madman from Meghna Bazaar known as Salama Pagla. He is commonly referred to by that name, this Salam Pagla had a peculiar characteristic, he walked backward while we walked forward. It was rare to see him walk in the same direction as others. Mahanbai also saw him very rarely walking forwards. It wasn't that he never did, but it was a rare occurrence. Most of the time, he walked backward. When he asked someone for food, the person would give him food. If they said they had no money for food at that moment, he would respond, that's fine, you go and bring some money. I'll be sitting here, so give me bread or whatever. However, if someone didn't give him food, he would never accept it later if they offered it. Strangely, he could offer solutions to problems due to God's blessings. Three brothers went to Salam Pagla, holding on to him and pleading about their sister's serious condition, saying they couldn't bear to see her suffer. When they asked Salam Pagla for help, he started listing names, mentioning that they had previously sought help from certain tantrics and religious leaders who couldn't resolve their issues, while Salam Pagla himself had no reason to be aware of these details. Despite the presence of others, the three brothers didn't let go of Salam Pagla's feet. Initially, he stated that their problem wouldn't be resolved. He mentioned a name related to a rare type of genetic predicament, which he had only said once before, and many didn't remember it. After a moment of silence, Salam Pagla said, All right, your sister's problem will be resolved if you sacrifice seven cows. You will cook seven pots of kachuri from the meat of these cows and distribute it among the villagers. Then your problem will be solved. The brothers replied that they didn't have the means to sacrifice seven cows, we don't really have that many cows, and the matter of cooking kachuri for seven people is something we can never afford. We will have to go door to door begging for food. Then that Salam Pagla will say that's what you should do. When people ask what we would be given, we can't say we are beggars, but they will laugh at all these matters. Now Salam Pagla says you should go to every house in the village and tell them Salam Pagla is asking for this. If they don't give, then you say that what they have on their sister's neck will enter that house unless they give it quickly to solve this problem, God willing. After this, they don't have to visit too many houses as the villagers generously provided. Whenever they heard Salam is sent word, everyone tried to help according to their means, whether it was money, cows, or rice, and they made efforts to solve the problem. Anyway, when the kachuri was cooked with seven cows, it was distributed to the villagers. And what an immense blessing from God that this terrible creature referred to as Baghdas didn't want to go away, not even possible to stop it with Rokia. Interestingly, once this was done, the problem seemed to resolve itself. Locally, people referred to it as Baghdas, 
That's why we have named this incident Baghdad as well. When I spoke with Mahim by over the phone, I asked him if Salam Pagla was still alive, and he sadly informed me that recently Salam Pagla died in an accident. Inna lalahi wa inna alayhi rajian. He also told me that his death was shrouded in mystery, and he mentioned there's a long story behind it that he will attempt to share later, dear listeners. How did you feel hearing this story? What a tough problem it was, and how simple the solution turned out to be. Although a lot of money was spent, thank God, this problem was resolved without any religious incantations or rituals. The real reason behind it remains unknown. Salam Pagla has passed away, if he were alive today, he could have helped many more people. Through his actions, he benefited many individuals, thank God. However, he is no longer with us. We had gone to Kishirganj, where we also sought a person of this kind, but he too has passed away. Gradually, these individuals are leaving this world, and those who remain are completely hidden from public view, sometimes even unrecognizable to us. It's also quite challenging to find those who truly understand the situation, as they are often influential figures. May Allah protect us. Dear listeners, I want to discuss an important issue, throwing hot items under fruit bearing or other types of trees, especially during the evening or at any time, is forbidden. This includes polluting or desecrating the space beneath these trees. There is a hadith prohibiting such actions. This is particularly relevant because a terrifying spirit known locally as Baghdad attacked. Just think about it, these spirits invisibly enter and become part of one's body, making it frightening when they become visible. Chains are breaking, and things are falling apart. This absurd situation even led to a fight involving three brothers. Just imagine how terrifying that must be. May Allah protect us. Thank you to Mahim Bai and everyone who sent us the stories for this episode. Deepest gratitude from the bottom of my heart.